12 years in public life developing a reputation for honesty and directness and blunt talk, um, one that I think is well deserved. But you know, when something like this happens, it's appropriate for you to question yourself, and certainly I am. Um, and I am soul searching on this. But what I also want the people of New Jersey to know is that this is the exception, not the rule. And they've seen that over the last four years with the way I've worked and what I've done. So I don't want to fall into the trap of saying, well, this one incident happened, therefore the one incident defines the whole. It does not. Just like one employee who's lied doesn't determine the character of all the other employees around you. And so I don't want to overreact to that in that way either, John. But if you're asking me over the last 48 hours or last 36 hours, I've done some soul searching, you bet I have. Brian? Brian? Well, listen, all I know is, I, I don't know, Brian, is the first answer I'll give you um, to the question. But what I'll also say is, listen, Mayor Phillips seems to be having a lot of disagreements with lots of people, with me, with the Senate president, and others. Um, there's going to be back and forth. There's going to be meetings canceled. There's going to be public disagreements. Um, uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, we've continued to work with Jersey City um, over the course of time since he's been mayor. Now, in the last year, I think we've approved about $190 million in EDA financing for, um, for projects in Jersey City. Uh, the DEP deputy commissioner was just meeting yesterday um, with Mayor uh, Phillip and his staff on Blue Acres issues to try to buy out properties that were affected by Sandy. So we continue to work with him. I don't know about specific meetings or, or what's going on, but certainly, um, you know, uh, I will look into all of those things. But the fact is that what Mayor Phillip knows is when we agree with him from a policy perspective, we'll work with him. When we disagree with him, we'll express those disagreements. Um, and sometimes that'll mean friction. He's suing the Port Authority at the moment. Okay, so there's lots of back and forth and to and fro that happens in these things. Um, I look into all this stuff, but in the end, um, have I at times been angry with Mayor Phillip and disagreed with him? You bet I have. But I also spoke at his swearing in, at his invitation. So political relationships in this state go up and down, as you know, Brian. Um, sometimes strange Bella fellows, sometimes expected ones. And they move. So I'm sure there's been movement in those relationships over time, but um, not anything that I can explain as to the specific question. Uh, Bob? Yeah, um, I, I heard that you actually, one of your staff read the Bergen record and learned something new in terms of situational awareness. Does the universal apology in the state of New Jersey include the press corps? Well, sure. I mean, listen, it, 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 you're, most of you, I hope, are citizens of New Jersey. So you would There's be. There's some exceptions. I, I know there are. I know that we don't need to point them out. But, I, but yes, of course it does. And because and, the fact is, I came out here and said something that was untrue. I mean, unwittingly, but I said something that was untrue. I think what you all have seen about me over the last four years of my dealings with you is that I deal with you directly. And I say exactly what I think. And, and I think over time, I have developed the reputation for telling you all the truth, as I see it. There could be disagreements, but the truth is I see it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, uh, would I include the press corps? Of course I would, because um, most, if not, uh, ma many, if not most of you, are residents of the state, and you rely upon this state government to be honest and trustworthy as well. And in this instance, um, my government fell short. And I take responsibility for that, and that's why I'm apologizing. Beth. 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 I'm, I'm wondering what your staff said to you about why you, they lied to you. Why would they do that? What was their explanation? And what about Mr. Sanders? What role did he play in that? I have, um, I have not had any conversation with Bridget Kelly since the email came out. And so she was not given the opportunity to explain to me why she lied, because it was so obvious that she had. And I'm quite frankly not interested in the explanation at the moment. I, I'm, I'm not done. She had a second part of the question. Um, I think General Sampson put out a statement yesterday um, that he had no knowledge of this. I interviewed him yesterday. He was one of my interviews. I'm convinced that he had absolutely no knowledge of this, that this was 
um, executed at the operational level and never brought to the attention of the Board of Commissioners until Chairman Foy wrote his email, or Executive Director Foy wrote his email to the Board of Commissioners. And so I sat and met for two hours yesterday with Mr. Sampson, um, General Sampson, and uh, again, I'm, I'm confident that he had no knowledge of this uh, based upon our conversations uh, and uh, his review of his information. So um, I think, you know, as he said yesterday, he's angered by this and upset about it, and I know that he's going to lead, um, cooperate with the OIG investigation that's ongoing um, and lead a discussion at the Port Authority about what can be done in the future to stop such conduct. Charlie, Charlie. Uh, you mentioned earlier that um, the question you're asking in reflection is, um, what did I uh, understand from the No, hey, Charlie, listen, I haven't because I know who I am. I'm not that person. And, and listen, it's easy for people to be characterized in public life based upon their personality. And I have a very direct, blunt personality. And I understand why some people would then characterize that, especially people who don't like you, as bullying. But it's not that. And I know that about myself. And, and no, I haven't asked that question, Charlie. I'm, I'm more focused on why the truth wasn't told to me. Melissa? Pardon me. I just did. Well, I just did. I said I, I'm sorry for that, and I would have never made that joke if if I knew the facts that have come forward to me today. So. Because I thought it was absurd, and I thought it ne that we had nothing to do with it. That's why. And obviously, I obviously the emails evidence a kind of callous indifference to the result of that. And. And I've, that's what I've apologized for, and I, and I do apologize for it, Melissa. And um, I certainly intend to apologize you know, to the mayor uh, today. I'm going to try to get a meeting with him uh, this afternoon. Terry. Who's that? I, I read that. I didn't. I didn't read that that way, um, at all. Uh, and that was a reference to a traffic study that, candidly, I know nothing about. Um, and, and I recognize that the email says something about the gov supported it or endorsed it. I, I have to. I because ha I don't know anything about it. I have to believe that was like the governor's office generically that reference. Because I, I, as I stand here today. I don't know anything about a traffic study in Springfield. What campaign, uh, your campaign, did you guys ever go into town and say, this is what happens if you endorse us? Oh, God, no. Absolutely not. No. No. It's just not, no, that's not the way it operated. Terry, we built relationships over four years with folks, trying to be helpful to every town that we could be helpful with appropriately. Um, and so, no, nothing like that was ever done. Governor, Governor, Governor. Governor. Yeah. Sure, there was a mistake. I mean, the soul searching is complete on that part of it. It was a mistake. Well, obviously, it was a mistake. It was. Listen, the fact is that mistakes were made, and I'm responsible for those mistakes. And I obviously try every chance I can to hire the very best people. And I think the history of this administration shows that we have hired outstanding people with great ethical standards who have done their jobs extraordinarily well. In a government of 65,000 people, there are going to be times when mistakes are made. Mistakes were made, and I remediated those mistakes today by the actions that I've taken. And so, you know, I'm, I'm in a constant state 
of trying to figure out um, what's, who are the best people for individual jobs who will make me proud to have put them there. And so that's always been going on. That's nothing new now. But, you know, there are times when people that you put in those decisions make mistakes, they disappoint you, you lose, their, you, you lose your confidence in them, or they lie to you. And when, when you find that out, the test of leadership is, what do you do? I found this out at 8.50 yesterday morning. By 9 o'clock this morning, Bridget Kelly was fired. By 7 o'clock yesterday evening, Bill Stepien was asked to leave my organization. That's pretty swift action um, for a day's work. And that's exactly the way I'll continue to conduct myself if there's any other information surrounding this that comes up or anything different that comes up over the course of the next four years. Phil. I can, I can differentiate, Phil, um, between people who have served me well and they haven't. And um, of course, there's always going to be some, after something like this, where you've been lied to, there's going to be some crisis in confidence. Okay? There always will be. I mean, anybody who tells you differently is not telling you the truth. If they say to you, you know, this happened to you and you're not going to second guess yourself at all, well, then you're, then you're just stupid. Of course, I've second-guessed myself and got through my head on some of this stuff. And in the future, I'll try to be even more careful. But here's what I know about human beings, Phil. I've hired a lot of them in my time as U.S. attorney, as governor, and as an attorney, a hiring attorney in a private practice law firm. Sometimes, despite the best background checks, beside, you know, despite the best interviews, despite your best instincts, sometimes people are a mistake hire. Sometimes they start off as a good hire, and because of circumstances that happen in their life, they change. You can't prevent everything. But the test of leadership is, when you find it out, what do you do? And I'm saddened to have to do this. It's difficult personally to do, but it's my job. And I've taken an oath, and I'm going to execute my job. Josh? Um, Governor, one thing I want to clear up because you mentioned that you had slept, left two nights before, and just found out about this yesterday morning when the record broke the story. Is that just a misstatement? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, a few things. First off, to, to my knowledge, and I think the mayor said this last night, I have no knowledge of him being asked for an endorsement. He may have been, but he certainly was never asked by me. Um, but he, I think, said last night on television that he doesn't recall ever being asked for an endorsement. That's why this made no sense to me, Josh, because why would you execute a vendetta against somebody who you didn't even give a chance to say no to? Put aside the fact that you shouldn't do that at all. But, but then if you never asked him for an endorsement, why are you mad at him that he didn't give one? I, it, none of it made any sense to me. So that's the first point. So you still don't know what prompted I don't. Okay. I don't. I, and, and, and again, I don't know whether this was a traffic study that then morphed into a political vendetta or a political vendetta that morphed into a traffic study. I mean, I've seen in front of the legislature, statistics and other things about the traffic study, so I know there's information there. I don't know what it is. And so we'll find out over time, maybe. But that's really in the minds of the people who were doing it. And that's what I based my decisions on at the time, was the testimony that people gave. Lastly, um, on the payback, yeah, no, no, no. Listen, I, I, I don't know exactly what you're referencing, um, but I think that you're talking about um, the, the, the FOI memo that was leaked? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? No. Well, as the memos, and, and it was a little hard to follow with the redactions, but it seems that um, according to Wildstein's emails, the traffic issue arose, complaints were made, a 
story appeared in one of the newspapers. Complaints were then lodged internally at the court over the stories. And so Wildstein says, I don't know the exact words, so forgive me, but it's something along the lines of we're taking appropriate action against the New York side and Samson <coughs> is working with us on it. Yeah, it was something, yeah. I, I asked um, General Samson about this, I think. It says, yeah, it said something to that effect. I remember exactly what it was. I asked Samson, General Samson about that yesterday. He said he has absolutely no idea what Wildstein's referring to. And that the only communication that he had at that time was his concern that he expressed to fellow commissioners about internal Port Authority documents being leaked. And that just said that's just not appropriate for folks to be leaking internal documents. But he has no recollection from what he told me yesterday of any conversation like that with Wildstein or Baroni at all that references what the, the gist of what you said in the email. No other internal payback operation going on? Not that I, certainly not that I'm aware of or not out of the normal. I mean, let's remember something too. Um, this is a bi-state agency with significant tension all the time. Now, there's no tension between Governor Cuomo and I. We get along quite well. And when issues rise to our level, we've always been able to resolve them. But there is tension, and always has been, between New York and New Jersey on the allocation of resources um, at the Port Authority. And so let me be clear, there, there are some battles over there that go on that have happened in every administration over the course of my memory. Uh, but you can't um, connect that to, that's kind of the ongoing nature of the tension of that agency, and I think of most bi-state agencies, although I think of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, because the resources are greater and the demands are greater, it's even more. Um, so no, nothing that I know of that's specific to that, Josh, but I do want to make clear to people that, you know, this is, there, there is tension that goes on between the employees of these agencies. Not every one of those issues of tension, thank goodness, are raised to my level and Governor Cuomo's level. But the good news for the people of New York and New Jersey is that when those issues have been raised um, in the last three years to my level and Governor Cuomo's level, we have always, between the two of us, amicably resolved it and been able to move on. And sometimes that's the roles governors have to play um, in that agency. Governor, yeah. two questions about your judgment. You said clearly that you had nothing to do with the actual implementation of what happened. So are you now questioning your own judgment about whether or not you could discern whether your nose was scandalous, or you could discern whether or not putting out a series of codes to change a couple of lanes of traffic was actually a legitimate traffic study? Okay, let me answer that, and then I'll let you follow up. Um, I don't know what makes a legitimate traffic study. It's not my area of expertise. And so uh, I wouldn't have a nose for that. It just wouldn't. I don't know what makes a legitimate traffic study. I've been told that sometimes they're done live, sometimes they're done by computer model. I've heard that in the professionals who testified for the Port Authority. Um, but you'd have to go to them to ask them what a legitimate traffic study is. I probably wouldn't know a traffic study if I tripped over it. So in this environment, it didn't raise a smell to you? No, it didn't. No, the second, second you follow up. Go ahead. You said, you said that, just a moment ago, that sometimes it raises to the level of governors. You report now that, in fact, you called Governor Cuomo to complain that the New York representative on the Port Authority board was asking too many questions. About Not true. Traffic. Not true. I've denied that story before. That's an old story, and Governor Cuomo has denied it as well. So it's not true. Governor, uh, didn't Pat Ford perjure himself when he said he didn't believe this traffic study? And you're saying you still think it exists? Did he lie under oath to I, I don't, listen, I have no idea. But, but clearly, you know, there's a difference of opinion between Senator Baroni and Pat Foy about the existence of a traffic study. And there seemed to me to be evidence that Senator Baroni showed of statistics and maps and other things about a traffic study. Now, this could go back to the nuance of what really constitutes a traffic study or not. They may be arguing about some specifics and nuance that I'm not familiar with. But I certainly would not accuse Pat Foy of perjuring himself. I don't. I'm not. Um, I'm just telling you what I was told and what we saw before the legislature. But, you know, I certainly wouldn't accuse uh, Pat Foy of perjuring himself yes, in any way. Would not under oath, right? so I, you still think everything he said was genuine and that he's not I, in any way... Listen, I d guess what? I, after reading everything yesterday, I don't know. But what I'm telling you is that that's what I've been told. He seemed to display evidence for that at the time. 
But that's now, because of the tone and tenor of these emails um, and, and text messages, that's now, you know, all this stuff is something that I'm not going to warranty because I don't know, given some of this back and forth that went on between all of them. Senator Brony's a very respected guy. He served in this building for a long time. I've known him for a long time. Um, uh, when he, you know, made his testimony, I would have no reason to believe that he wasn't telling the truth. But obviously, from reading these emails yesterday, there was other stuff going on that I hadn't been informed about. Bob? I never called him personally, no, but Baroni's position continued to be that there was a traffic study, and he had a disagreement with Pat Foy about that. Um, so, you know, they had a disagreement. That was pretty clear, and I didn't think Bill Baroni was going to change his mind because Pat Foy had already expressed those concerns in earlier written documents that he had, you know, or not he, but that someone had put out to the press. Matt? I had no conversation with Bill Stepien yesterday. Are you curious to know what, what happened here yourself? I mean, no, no, listen, I had, I had earlier conversations with Bill Stepien where, as I ex expressed to you at the time, that Bill told me he knew absolutely nothing about this. So, um, you know, and, and certainly the emails yesterday, any emails involving Bill Stepien were all after, well after the fact. Um, so. Uh, but that's not the basis upon which I made my decision on Bill. Matt, my decision on Bill was made based on the fact of the tone, the tenor, and the conduct that was evidenced in those emails. Um, I lost confidence in his judgment. And that's why I made the decision I made as, as to Bill. Yeah, Brian? Brian? Uh, it's I have no idea what the decision-making process would even look like at this point, as I've said many times before. And I know that everybody um, in the political media and in the political chattering class um, wants to start the 2016 race. And universities can't help themselves but do polls that are meaningless three years away from an election. And you guys can't help but put them on the air and talk about them. My job is to be governor of New Jersey. And I have, I'll say what I've said before, I am enormously flattered that folks would talk about me in my party as someone who they think could be a candidate for president. But I am absolutely in nowhere near beginning that consideration process. I haven't even been sworn in for my second term yet. I've got work to do here, and that's my focus. My focus is on the people of New Jersey and the job that they gave me. And so all those considerations are, you know, the kind of hysteria that goes around this because everybody's in that world gets preoccupied with that job. I am not preoccupied with that job. I'm preoccupied with this one. And as you can tell, I got plenty to do. So it's not like I've got some spare time to spend. Yes. Because you're rolling your eyes and looking very, you know, <laughs> disgruntled that I hadn't called on you yet. Well, I've known Brian longer than you. So. I think you've, I think, I'm sad. I'm sad. That's the predominant emotion I feel right now, is sadness. Sadness that I was betrayed by a member of my staff. Sadness that I had people who I entrusted with important jobs who acted completely inappropriately. Sad that that's led the people of New Jersey to have less confidence in the people that I've selected. The emotion I've been displaying in private is sad. And as I said earlier, I think in the answer to your question, you know, I don't know what the stages of grief are in exact order, but I know anger gets there at some point. I'm sure I'll have that too. But the fact is, right now, I'm sad. And so and, friend, David well, let me just clear something up, okay, about my childhood friend, David Wildstein. It is true that I met David in 1977 in high school. He's a year older than me. David and I were not friends in high school. We were not even acquaintances in high school. I mean, I had a high school in Livingston, 
a three-year high school that had 1,800 students in a three-year high school in the late 70s, early 1980. I knew David Wallace was. I met David on the Tom Kane for Governor campaign in 1977. He was a youth volunteer and so was I. Really, after that time, I completely lost touch with David. We didn't travel in the same circles in high school. You know, I was the class president and athlete. I don't know what David was doing during that period of time. And then we re reacquainted years later in, I think, 2000, when he was helping Bob Franks with his Senate campaign against John Corzine. So we went 23 years without seeing each other. And in the years we did see each other, we passed in the hallways. Um, so I want to clear that up. It, it, it doesn't make a difference except that I think some of the stories we've written impute like an emotional relationship and closeness between me and David that doesn't exist. Um, I, I know David um, and you know I knew that Bill Baroni wanted to hire David to come to the Port Authority and I gave my permission for him to do it but that was Bill's hire. Um, he asked for permission. I gave my permission for him to hire David. But let's be clear about the relationship, okay? Um, and how do I feel about David now? Listen, what I read yesterday makes me angry. That's the one bit of anger I felt. That language and that callous indifference in those emails from David yesterday are just over the top and outrageous and should never, ever have been written or uttered by somebody with a position of responsibility like that and, and, those, and those sentiments. So that's the way I feel about it and that's the opportunity to further expound on my relationship. Yeah, John. I had made my. John, I, I, I said I haven't spoken to them since I discovered the emails, but I spoke to them beforehand. Um, and Bridget clearly did not tell me the truth. Um, and Bill, uh, you know what he told me at the time, is not contradicted by the emails. Um, but the emails and the color and character of the emails. Has led, have led me to conclude that I don't have confidence in his judgment any longer, and that's why I asked him to move on, and he has. Um, and so, you know, at this point, um, there are legislative hearings that are going to come and all the rest, and I don't want to get myself in the middle of that. Um, Chairman Wisniewski said pretty clearly yesterday that he intends to ask Bridget Kelly and Bill Stepney to testify, and I don't, my gut sense, John, is that it wouldn't be appropriate for me to get in the middle of that, because then there would be all kinds of other allegations about those conversations. So I think the smarter thing for me to do is as to those two folks who I made determinations regarding their future to, to move on from there and talk to other folks who are still in my employ. Well, well, yeah. Is there are other names in your inner circle who are in those emails. If you name or you see or you put away, are you confident and some fairly high up, are you confident that they are, you know, they're fine I believe, I believe that I've spoken to everyone who was mentioned in the emails except for Charlie McKenna, who is away at a family funeral. Um, and I am confident, based upon my conversations with them, that they had no prior knowledge nor involvement in um, this, this situation. Yeah, well, that's your characterization, not mine. But there was nobody on my staff who had any knowledge of this issue um, until after the, the issue was already done. I'm um, in the back, yes. It's awful. Now, I've also seen conflicting reports about what the cause of death was and whatever, but it doesn't matter. It's awful to hear. Again, again. Listen, all I can do is apologize for the conduct of people who worked for me. I can't do anything else. I can't reverse time. If I could, believe me, I would. But I'm just going to apologize. I think that's all you can do. And, and there's, there's really nothing else you can do. Governor, uh, David. Uh, Governor, along the lines of doing the job <coughs> as governor that you have said that you're focused on regaining the trust of the people of New Jersey, a lot of people are upset about this and shocked. Um, the first couple of years you were governor, you did a lot of town hall meetings. You traveled all over the state and spoke to people. 
any thought about possibly trying to do something like that again? Oh, well, we clearly are going to do town halls in the second term, David. I think we suspended town halls during the campaign because of our concern that folks may raise the issue of, in the midst of a campaign, blurring the line between what would be a town hall event, what would be a campaign event. And so during the campaign, we made the determination we weren't going to do town hall meetings um, as the campaign heated up uh, to avoid that concern. Um, and, you know, I certainly had no plans to do it during the transition. I was trying to get through a transition. But we certainly intend to do town hall meetings in the second term um, and, and try to do, you know, hopefully as many as we did in the first term. I enjoy the town hall setting and process. And, and, and the fact is, David, you know, I think... Um, I don't believe I've lost the trust of the people of New Jersey. I think the people of New Jersey are looking to see, when mistakes are made, how their leader is going to react. And I, and I believe that when they see me take the action I'm taking today, that they'll say, mistakes were made, governor had nothing to do with that, but he's taking responsibility for it, and he's made the decisions that need to be made, and has promised us he'll continue to make those decisions uh, if necessary going forward. Michael? Governor, two questions. Uh, do you think <coughs> Listen, um, that's between David and his attorney. He's represented by counsel now. I mean, I'd love to hear the whole story um, for my own purposes, but I can't, you know, advise them what to do. Someone who's represented by counsel is going to make his own judgment. You encourage him to do that? I just did. I said I'd like to hear the story, but I don't want to be in the position of instructing someone to do something because they're 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 represented by counsel. He and his lawyer will determine what they believe is in their best interest. Certainly, um, you know. Uh, hearing the story would be good for everybody. Governor, who, who, who initiated this whole thing? I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, listen, up to this point in time, up to the emails were released yesterday, it was Senator Brony's testimony that Mr. Wildstein initiated it at his approval, with his approval. Um, now, I, I, you know, I don't know, given some of the emails that I saw yesterday. Um, but clearly Mr. Wildstein played a major role in it, um, whether it was his idea and initiation as Senator Baroni testified, I guess time will tell. Um, but clearly there was knowledge of this action, whatever it was, prior to the beginning of it with Bridget Kelly. And that was something that I said in direct um, answer to Angie's question a few weeks ago was not the case. Um, that's what we were told after repeated questioning of all the people around here, and um, I was lied to. And for that, she's been terminated. Governor Angie? Governor, um, as you as attorney, you interviewed hundreds, if not thousands of people. Um, how did you fail to get the truth from your own staff? Well, first off, I would love, Angie, for you and others to believe that I interviewed hundreds, if not thousands, of people as U.S. attorney. I did not. Um, my AUSAs interviewed hundreds, if not thousands, of people. Uh, it was the very rare occasion when the U.S. attorney himself or herself goes into a room and interviews a witness. It probably happened a dozen times in seven years. It's a very rare occurrence. Um, Angie, if you're trying to understand this on a personal level, if you've worked with someone for five years and they've been a member of your political team and then governmental team, and you look at them and you say to them, what do you know about this? And did you have any involvement in it? Did you have any knowledge of it? And they look at you and they say no. And you've had, never had any reason before to believe that they were anything but a truth teller. Why wouldn't you believe them? I mean, I work on the basis of trust with people. And I assume over a period of time that most people are trustworthy unless proven otherwise. And so when we asked those questions and we got those answers, there was no reason at the time we asked the questions for us to believe that they weren't true based upon the conduct of that person. And I think, you know, even if you look at some of the stories today written about Bridget Kelly, I don't think you heard anybody in those stories talk about her in any way but very positive ways, given her history here in the State House working for the legislature. So I had no reason to believe that she was telling me anything other than the truth. And that's why I used the phrase before that I was heartbroken. Because I trusted that I was being told the truth, and I wasn't. 
and, 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 and I wasn't by somebody who I placed a significant amount of trust in. So yeah, did I miss it? We missed it. I mean, that's why we're here, right? We missed it. But then what do you do when, when you find out you missed it? I found out at nine, a little before nine yesterday morning, by nine o'clock this morning, her position was terminated. Um, and, I, and I think that's swift, appropriate action that people would expect from the chief executive of the state. Yeah. You know, I understand what you're saying. I can't read anything else into it beyond. I know you're inferring certain things from the email. I think that's a reasonable inference, but I don't know. I don't know the answer because remember, when we asked questions, we didn't even know about the existence of the email. I found that out for the first time at 8.50 yesterday morning. And you can only imagine, as I was standing there in my bedroom with my iPad, looking at that, how incredibly sad and betrayed I felt. And so I don't know what to say beyond that. Governor, Josh? Governor, you, you were a U.S. attorney who was very high profile that you investigated governors. One governor in particular over a governor's office and a state party. You now are a governor who has a U.S. attorney investigating people that were connected to your office. Okay. What instructions are you giving, have you given to your staff? What will you do? And can we expect to see claims of executive privilege? And you know, Mr. Fisher, you cannot have documents, or are you going to cooperate fully and you're an open Listen, I, I, I have absolutely nothing to hide. And I have not given any instruction to anyone yet, but my instruction to everybody will be to cooperate and answer questions. I, I you know, Josh, I have nothing to hide. So any questions anybody wants to ask me, they can ask. Um, you know, from, from law enforcement, you know, anything they want to ask. Uh, they can ask. Um, so we have nothing to hide, and this administration has nothing to hide. Governor, Governor, Governor. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, um, in terms of, it seems like your fact finding is still getting some momentum. We're still finding out what's going on. Uh, do you think this could have an impact that it could be put in, uh, on hold, Kevin Dodd, uh, Dow's nomination to be Attorney General since he was the Chief of Staff and he would probably be involved setting the tone? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, Kevin's. You know, confirmation hearing will go forward on Tuesday. Um, and uh, I expect, you know, he'll be vigorously questioned like any candidate for attorney general should be. And I expect that he'll get swift and, uh, and certain confirmation because he deserves it. Elise. I have not, hadn't thought about that yet, Elise. There's been a lot of things I've been thinking about that wasn't one of them. I'll put it on my list to consider, but I haven't thought about it yet. Have you read any other emails? Um, yesterday's um, emails was just a small amount in terms of what's available. We've, we've been given no documents, Elise. Have you requested any more documents? I don't know, but we certainly, none were offered to us um, to review. I mean, the first time we saw any documents was on the Bergen Record website yesterday morning and we haven't been offered any. Charlie? Um, was Bridget Kelly, uh, did she have the authorization to carry out uh, significant uh, policy decisions uh, 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 such as authorization of the governor's office approval for a traffic study or funding without getting prior approval from uh, you or a senior staff? Or well, she just Well, it, listen, I, I, don't, um, I don't believe Bridget um, had policy, um, policy authority um, on any issue. Bridget's job was to interact with the other governmental agencies um, and to have interaction with members of the legislature. And that was her job. So my understanding of her authority um, was that she had no authority on policy. Um, that policy issues had to be run through um, the chief of staff's office. Um, and, and so, no, I, you know, now, uh, again, I know there's certain suppositions 
in that, in that question. But um, my understanding of Bridget's authority was not that it extended to policy, no. So Melissa. Get to, to get to that supposition, or as a follow-up question, is it uh, a belief or is it that some share that they, they find it hard to believe that Bridget could be, would be making these kind of calls and making these kind of decisions uh, as reflected in the email uh, that we saw yesterday without prior approval or without the knowledge of the senior staff? She had no prior approval. I mean, let's put aside the supposition. She had no prior approval from the chief of staff, who was her direct report, and she had no prior approval from the governor. Um, she did not seek it. We weren't informed about it. And so if she acted in a manner which exceeded her authority, um, which seems, you know, to be a possibility, uh, you know, that's what she did. But I had no knowledge of this, and neither did the chief of staff. Melissa. Um, I, I spoke to Mike last night. Um, David at that time was considering whether or not to resign. Um, and, um, and he made the determination the next day in a meeting with um, the administration to resign. Um, but I don't believe from my conversation um, with Mike last night that that was the main topic of the... Um, uh, also have to answer the call. You know, he, he, when 